As of yesterday, it has now been 10 months since I've become an amputee. It's been 10 months since I've started this channel and oh my God, it has been a wild ride filled with adventure and laughter and tears and challenges and really cool things and difficult ones and let's talk about that. Hello, my beautiful internet friends and welcome back. This is the 10 month post amputation update. I've done a couple other ones of these for the different months. Three month update because today is the three month month anniversary of my amputation. That has been four months since my amputation, just over four months. Today is the six month anniversary of losing my leg. Honestly, these serve a couple different purposes. One, I think it's neat to have the documentation for myself. Secondly, if you're gonna face amputation, it might be good to know what it looks like at different stages. And lastly, um, it makes for a fun video, I think, to kind of recap everything. Hi, Sadie. For um, all of you guys who have been here for a part of the journey, or if you haven't, here's what's been happening. I won't go into like everything just because a lot of my recent videos have been focused on like what's coming up and the fact that I'm having surgery again in a few weeks just about two weeks exactly, which is kind of crazy. But the, the one big question that's been echoing around my head is if I knew what I know now, would I still have done it? Would I still have had an elective leg amputation to make my life better when it has been a very, very uphill battle? So let's talk about that. Quick recap, if you have not been here for a lot of this, I had my leg chopped off October 11th, 2018. Hey everybody, it's Joe. It is now one day before my ankle amputation. We are headed up to Denver tonight to uh, get everything prepared and at 7.30 tomorrow morning, I will have my right lower leg chopped off, amputated, taken off. December, I got fitted for a prosthetic, I think it was, and then quickly after that, I had a really, really bad fall that caused a couple bursas. Long story short, I had surgery in March. Right now, as you are watching this, I actually scheduled it to go live the minute that my surgery is starting, I am having surgery as we speak. It fixed things, but it, it didn't actually fix things. It caused issues and other underlying issues were still there. And so I have been on hold, unable to use a prosthetic since December. And now I am two weeks out from having my leg cut off a second time. It's super weird to think about. At the beginning of all of this, I had this expectation in my head that things would be really hard. Obviously becoming an amputee would be incredibly difficult and so Something that I couldn't predict. Hey guys, it's Joe. Welcome back. You can see some of my cute little puppies sitting over there. I've realized that trying to predict how we're going to react to something is pretty damn useless because you don't know until you get there. But I did like all the research that I possibly could. I watched all the YouTube videos for weeks on end. I researched everything that I could. I looked up what life would really look like. I've been talking to the amputee community, which has been amazing because there are a surprising number of people who have leg amputations when you really start talking to people. And there's been a lot of support and a lot of answering questions. What the actual you know challenges and struggles would be, but I still think I kind of had a rosy picture of what my life would be. I thought that it would fix problems and not cause them, which was a naive view to have, but I was very, very hopeful. And so I thought, okay, I'm gonna have this done. Six to eight weeks later, I'm gonna get fitted for a prosthetic. It's gonna be hard, it's gonna be difficult. I'm gonna have to readjust to life. This is a change forever, but I'm gonna be able to walk again, maybe without pain, and that's worth it. And so it's not that there wasn't more thought that I put into it, because believe me, there was, but that was, that was like it when you boiled it down, right? I just wanted to be able to do things and I saw this as the way to do that because surgeries were gonna end in amputation anyway. Like after the recovery is mostly done, like being able to run and being able to do stuff and being able to hike with my dogs and even just freaking walk around the block without as much pain as I have right now. And again, if you don't know what I'm talking about or my whole story, I'll link a playlist down below that thoroughly goes into all of that. And one thing that I think I even said in a few videos towards the beginning is I know that I, I don't even know all the questions to ask. Telling me to ask questions I wouldn't have even thought to ask. Like I cannot predict how difficult this is going to be or what my reaction is gonna be because frankly, none of us can predict our reactions to something until we actually get there. There is no way to predict how I am going to feel. This has been so much harder than I ever could have imagined in so many more ways. And it's like, it's all the little things, frankly. It's all the little things that get to me. It's the not being able to stand up and move even a few steps without thinking about it. It's not being able to get myself a glass of water without thinking about it and putting effort into it. And everything is um, everything is still pretty exhausting. And I'm adjusting, like I'm finding a new normal, but it has been emotionally a train wreck at times and exhausting, but then at the same time, I've been able to do so much. Like I traveled overseas for the first time in my life in months like 
six or five of being an amputee, which I'm super proud of myself for being able to do. And I launched this channel and I get to talk to all of you guys. So there have been really, really cool things along the way. But the question, like I said, that I've been asking myself at month 10, heading into another amputation, a revision, they're doing it all over again. I'm kind of starting over at, at stage one is if I knew what was gonna happen, would I do it over again? It's funny, I posted a community poll a little while ago saying, hey, if you have any questions, I'll be doing the Q&A. And so many of those questions were, do you regret it? Like, would you go back and, and do it? It being having this amputation again. And I have to be honest, um, yes, I would. But I'm also honestly glad that I didn't know what I know now because I think it would have made the decision so much more difficult. I wanted to be informed. Like I wanted to know what the challenges and struggles and risks were. Obviously, that's important. You cut into one there. So that's the leg that we're considering removing. So yeah, at this point I'm thinking it's probably best, given the information and life I'm living right now, to go ahead with a lower leg amputation. But I think that there was no way that I could actually absorb how hard this was gonna be. There was no way that I could comprehend that without actually going through it myself. And I kind of think it was necessary for me to be able to make the decision not to know how hard it was gonna be. I think I'm just thinking about things from like a rational perspective. Like it makes sense to do this because it's the quickest way to a better life. I kind of had to separate the emotional and the rational sides of my thought process of my being and just focus on the rational for a little while and realize that yes, this is the best decision for my life. Yes, it is going to be hard, but I kind of threw hard into this bucket of like, yeah, I've gone through stuff before. I've gone through challenges in my life before and I've made it out to the other side. But with the information I have, this is the decision I need to make. I'm glad I made it. But if I could go back and tell Joe before surgery, this is how hard it's actually going to be. I don't think I would. I'm doing it. In nine days, I'm going to have it below the right knee leg amputation. Um, it has not been an easy decision to make. I have done a lot of thinking, a lot of talking to people, and yeah, nine days, I will have my lower leg removed and start a new chapter of life. I don't think I would let her into all of those bits and pieces and secrets because I don't think that I would have heard them. I don't think I needed to hear them. That decision needed to be made. I haven't seen the benefits of that decision yet. Like I'm not able to walk. I'm definitely not in less pain. Well, that's not true actually. Most days my residual limb does hurt less than my ankle did, which is fantastic, but I'm also not on it. If I actually try to put any weight on it, it's just as bad or way worse. So at month 10, I can tell you sincerely, I don't regret this, but also this was a hell of a lot harder than I ever could have thought in every possible way. I thought that things were gonna go smoothly at a minimum, and I thought that even that was gonna be hard, which is true. But with all the bumps in the road, this has tested me in every, pretty much every possible way. And I'm still in the process of, of that testing and um, it's a challenge. But there are so many bits of gold along the way too. And even though I don't see the reward yet, even though I don't see the benefit, I am holding on to hope that it's there. I'm holding on to the vision that one day I'm gonna make a video of going, <laughs> hello tears, of going for a jog for the first time on a running leg. And before that, before I show you guys that, I'm gonna show all the clips like this all the moments previous to this where I felt hopeless and I felt like it was never gonna be okay and like I would never get there. And I'm gonna piece all those together. And then one day I'm gonna run and it's gonna be okay. I'm just not there yet. And in this particular moment, it may change 10 minutes from now, I feel hopeful about this next surgery. I feel hopeful that it will bring some help. I love the medical team that I'm working with. I feel like they're very, very competent and like I might actually be able to get somewhere and that's really cool. So at month 10, I'm grateful to be moving forward finally. At month 10, I'm still terrified of all of this. At month 10, I'm very overwhelmed. I'm still getting used to it. I'm still making peace with the fact that I am an amputee and what that means, how sometimes very difficult and challenging it is. Also, I love that you can see a puppy foot. <laughs> I didn't notice that until just now. How long has that been the case, Sadie? Sadie, how long have you been in the video? And oh, and we're about to be invaded by a secondary shepherd. <laughs>
Hi, Sophie. Mommy's gotta finish the video goalie down. She's such a good dog. Anyways, this is me at month 10. And you know what? In the grand scheme of things, 10 months actually isn't that long. I think it makes sense that I'm still adjusting, that I'm still grieving, that I'm still having a hard time. And I'll get there, wherever there is. It's a process, it's a journey, and all of those other super cliche words. Thank you for being a part of this journey with me. It means more to me than I can ever tell you with words. Thank you. Thank you to my patrons who make this possible, who sponsor my videos and support what I do. Thank you watching this video for spending a few minutes of your day here with me learning about month 10. I love you guys, I'm thinking about you, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye guys. Sadie's foot says bye too. Good girl. Hand her from the sky,